Hello everyone, welcome to Recursive Gaming and another video for Iron Saga. In this video I have a lot of really, really cool stuff to show you. I've made a decent amount of progress in the game. We are now level 35, so we are one level away from unlocking our pilot's next skills. Um, I have completed the main story up to the end of chapter... hold on. That's not what I meant to do. Main story, here we go. Up to the end of chapter 20 but I have not completed chapter 20 yet because I am saving the last battle for you guys chapter 20 marks the end of the original story in the game so chapter 20 was the end game it was the last story when the game was first released when the game first came out so I wanted to save this last battle for you guys first let's look at the team that we're running with here we've got Bekus and the Yaksha modified um, he's generally better in a melee or a mid-range mech um, that's highly disruptive and evasive and all kinds of stuff like that. But um, because I've got him up to six stars now, that's right, I've got Bekus up to six stars, raised his affection that much. So look at his stats, guys. 300 plus, 332 in the melee stat. So 300 plus stats compared to the rest of the team. You can see how much better of a pilot he is than the rest. Almost three times better than any other pilot. So, with my best ranged damage items um, on the best ranged damage mech that I've got, I figured it would be best to get him putting out as much damage as possible. And that's worked for me. I used to have him in the Rakshasa, the heavily armored Rakshasa drone mech. Um, but he was just pulling about half the damage that he does in the Yaksha Modified. So the team right now is Yaksha Modified with the best ranged weapon DPS items that I have with my Bekus at six star. Then I've got Sasaki and this works out tremendously well. She's actually not very tanky. I did not build her full tank because I finally got a Dao Tong. The Dao Tong has um, Unyielding, which is basically like Undeath or Death Defiance. Uh, gets 50% golden mode and cannot be killed by typical means for five seconds whenever she takes fatal damage. So that, plus this right here, generates a shield that reflects all ranged attack when her HP is lower than 15%. So she gets a shield that blocks all ranged attacks for a couple of seconds, and then when she reaches fatal damage, she gets another five seconds of undeath, undeath or death defiance. So that's seven or eight seconds where she, you know, basically can't be killed. Um, so she doesn't need full tank, right? My only goal for her to, is to do as much damage as possible before she dies, because if I put full tank uh, full tank items on her, she does a lot less damage, and she only survives for a few seconds longer. In my testing, it just wasn't worth it. So I built her full damage, right? So we've got transmission core, melee damage, ability cooldown, melee damage, and I could go with my blue version of a melee item, slightly higher damage modifier and also reduces targets attack but this range of melee attack increase actually helps her land her hits a lot more often so that is very helpful for her trying to get in and actually smack the enemy with her fists so the wide range lightsaber is doing a good job there here we've got iron fists again i might have some tankier items i could put on such as this with 15 percent chance to block but the 15% or the 13% melee damage is doing a lot because I'm tripling down, so to speak. I'm using three melee damage items in those spots, and so uh, she's doing a good job, very good job. In fact, some matches she has most damage, even though she's in a melee mech, and most of the time she dies first. So even though she dies first, uh, especially if she gets her ultimate off. So I have been putting her skill points into her ultimate. It's only at level 9, but still. Um, once I get her hits, if I grind some hits with her in combat simulation, because she's only at 500 hits, it, all it would take is one day of grinding hits and I'd be able to max out that skill. So she's pretty useful, guys. She's doing a good job in the Dao Tong. I got very lucky with this. This is a, an extremely, extremely rare mech, hard to find. And I did manage to find one in the black market and I bought it as soon as I saw it. So if you see a Dao Tong, definitely pick it up. Best A rank melee mech, in fact, better than a lot of S rank mechs. Uh, for a melee spot on your team uh, in the entire game. So, uh, for a starting free-to-play player, okay? I'm not talking about, you know, tr triple S rank, you know, limited event type mechs. I'm talking about for a free-to-play player. But Dao Tong is definitely worth picking up and using. It's an excellent mech. Yaksha Modified, best range DPS, A rank mech. So, I'm using two Yaksha Modifieds. I did manage to find the second one, 
So I'm using two of those. This is using the Burst Magazine build. Okay, so Burst Magazine from the Burst Core, and then Burst Missile Weapons Magazine on the Extended Missile Magazine. So if we look at the mech here, I'm getting Burst Missiles times four. Instead of times two, because I've increased the magazine, she gets four. And so it, it fires in groups of two. If you remember testing in a previous episode, I can't remember if it was, if it was episode three or four, uh, we got our first Yaksha modified and we tried one of the Burst Magazine items on her and it only went up to three, which was not enough. She fires them in groups of two. Uh, and it doesn't say that anywhere in here. Sometimes you just got to test things out to figure out what's not working and what's going to work. So it requires increasing the magazine twice in order for it to work. And so she does that now. She fires two groups of two from each of these. So four missiles, uh, no, four groups of two missiles going out. So eight missiles total, basically. So yeah, she's doing a good job in that. Her DPS is considerably less than Beckus, but that's not just because of the build and he's got better items. It's also because um, she's not, you know, her stats aren't nearly as good as Beckus. So... She does a really good job for what she's got, and this mech is going to be putting out more damage than most other mechs at A-Rank. Anyways, so this is a good build. This is an early game free-to-play build. Um, so anyways, it's the build that Beckus would be using if he didn't have access to these better items, such as 23% uh, increased damage for all elements, and then 21% increased range damage. So, In the fourth spot, we have Bora. And now this is an interesting pick. She is not in the French Mark II. I managed to find a French Mark III. The French Knight Mark III is a ranged damage version of the French Knight, and it is very, very good. Better than most people realize. This mech is extremely, extremely good. Uh, it lands paralysis damage, and quite a bit. Uh, and if you build her with enough reload, then these are coming up often enough that she's paralyzing the enemy pretty often. In addition to that, she is immune to deceleration and impact and freezing effects. So naturally, very, very good at uh, not being locked down by enemy crowd control. And then 15% chance to block frontal attacks, which is good because she's got her shield up and she's facing the enemy most of the time. So she's blocking most attacks. Um, she's not going to be spinning and doing a lot of side movements. She's got Chain Shot, which now allows her to do her main sniper weapon, which is really good. The Positron Rifle is very strong for an A-rank weapon. So yeah, this is a great mech. Um, a good supplement to the team, trying to do good damage while also doing crowd control. And then in the fifth spot as a reinforcement is my healer. Uh, and if you're going to be using her as a healer, you want to be putting all of your points skill points I should say, into her main heal. Okay, so this is what makes her useful for me, that's why I'm using her. If you've got her in a tank spot, I would recommend fo doing focus next. Okay, and then third, I would raise incentive. Now Guinevere is an excellent unit, you can even use her at end game. She has a really good heal uh, right here, as well as being fairly tanky with 18% chance to block and in giving the entire team SP. So. A very solid pilot, actually. Definitely worth using. Uh, so she is my tank. And she is in a French Knight Mark II. Uh, you've seen me use this mech before. It is one of the better a rank tanks in the game. It's not as good as Dao Tong, but it's better than Dao Tong when it comes to being disruptive on the enemy. So one of these abilities, uh, I think it's either Spiral Dash or Gun Charge. No, it's Gun Charge. So Gun Charge uh, dashes through the enemy like throws them up in the air and also paralyzes them at the same time so she's very disruptive using her for the same reason as the french knight mark three trying to land paralysis hits lock down enemy targets and she's very aggressive the ai for this mech is extremely aggressive you've seen me use it before it's an excellent mech so i'm building her with as much tank as possible with the exception of this so something important to note when you're boosting either for instance with this one the first second and third weapon or with oh uh, where is it i'm not seeing it there's oh here it is this one the first and second weapon when you're using um most ranged mechs okay that don't have a melee weapon and, or if they do they hardly ever use it and they're mostly a, a ranged mech for the most part the first and second weapon is going to be the first and second weapons you see here right but with melee mechs 
if the melee weapon is the first weapon on this list, then it boosts their melee damage. That's very important. So for instance, uh, let's look at this, okay? First weapon on this pers on this mech's list is the beam cannon, right? So the first and second, or first, second, and third is going to boost his beam cannon. It's not going to boost his melee damage. And you might think it does the same here. And you might look at this mech and think, oh, so it's going to boost the positron pulses, right? Yes, but first it boosts the melee damage. So if you're building melee damage, you don't necessarily have to put on... Hold on. You don't necessarily have to put on melee damage. If you're trying to build melee damage on a melee mech, you can actually use an item such as this, and it also boosts melee damage by even more. Look, so this is level 1. Let's do the math here. Every level adds 0.41%. So about 2.5 levels for 1%. Or, er, hold on. Yeah, 2.5 levels for 1%. So if we're level 30... Hold on. 1%... Oh, hold on. Two and a half levels divided into 30 is what? About 15? About 13 maybe? Or 12? Let's say 12 upgrades. No. 12, okay. 12%, right? Am I doing this right? About 12 to 13%? Yeah, I think that's right. So this would be about 33%. As opposed to this, which is only about 20%. So I'd be getting, and this, which is only, well, I mean, it goes in this spot, so. And if we didn't have a purple item, right, then let's say you wanted to boost the melee damage. What else do we have that boosts melee damage? This right here, 5%, on only a 0.17%. Um, so if you're trying to boost melee damage on a melee mech, is the point I'm getting to, you don't necessarily have to boost melee damage like this. You can use an item like this with a much higher modifier and get a, and get way more benefit out of it. Okay, if you're actually trying to boost melee damage, this doesn't just boost weapons, guys. It says weapons, but the first weapon on a melee mech is actually its melee weapon. Look, Iron Fists. If I use that, both of these Iron Fists would be upgraded first, and the damage for those would enjoy a 33% upgrade. So, my point is, it doesn't have to say melee damage. If it says first, second, third, whatever, if you're boosting, if it says if you're boosting the first weapon, then the first weapon on a melee mech is its melee weapons. So, you know, just saying that. So, right here, when it says it's boosting the first, second, and third weapon by 30%, I'm actually boosting the melee damage as well as its other form of damage. Okay? So, this mech benefits from this item pretty good. In case you were wondering why I didn't put this, which is also a good choice. But it doesn't have a whole lot of weapons and abilities. It's a pretty simple mech. So, switching between weapons and abilities 10% faster doesn't actually make it act that much faster. It's not like it's struggling because it has way too many weapons. So, the only benefit I would get would be the stats. But, so, the reason why I didn't put this, or the melee damage here, or, you know, something else. Uh, this is actually boosting the damage a lot because it boosts melee damage as well. And then I've got uh, reduction for attack, and then the typical tank items that you guys have seen before. 10% chance to block from the flank. Reduce missile damage received plus HP, so really boosting the HP, and then re reducing melee damage, and 15% chance to negate any melee attack and reflect it back to the opponent, okay? One other thing you might have seen by browsing through this setup is that I've got pets now. If you hadn't noticed, I got this pet in a previous episode uh, from a reward for beginner missions uh, in a side quest, right? Where I got a pet box and I got to choose my pet, so I chose Laz as my first pet. These other two pets I got as rewards from doing story mode. Whether from a box or an event in story mode, I got very lucky and I got some pets to drop. This is over here on her. Okay. And, uh, hold on. And this one. Because they're, they're both melee pets, right? So Pilot's melee attribute is only going to help two mechs on the entire team. Melee mech and melee mech. So I've got two melee... Uh, pets, so I really only had two choices for them. Uh, Bora wouldn't benefit from this, and neither would... Um, I can never remember this pilot's name. Arashi. So, had some pets now. Uh, so it's a pretty solid a rank team, guys. Not gonna lie. It's doing a good job. So let's go ahead and do that last battle in Chapter 20. Where are we going? 
right up here so as you can see I haven't done it yet I've been saving it for you guys I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to do this but I really think I'll be fine so another reason why it's good to put uh, Sasaki in your main melee tank to survive or I mean in your main melee tank uh, in your first part of the team right not the, not, not not as a replacement Oh, I didn't get it in time oh okay barely so right before she died I managed to use her ult which is another reason why it's so good to have the Delta on she stays alive just long enough to get her ult off and do massive damage to the enemy team alright so we did it we got Ying Lin nice new free pilot very 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 good might actually replace Sasaki with Ying Lin and then actually put some affection in Ying Lin and then farm uh, skills for him because Ying Lin is a better pilot than Sasaki so uh, I've also got a free copy of King Long which is a very nice mech so let's take a look at the scoreboard look at that guys Sasaki in the Dao Tong actually doing more damage than the rest of my team including my Bekkus with some of the best items that I have so that right there should show you how good that combo really is and her ultimate is so so stupidly strong okay so let's go back to the hangar after we finish that and let's get all of our goodies so we are in day seven of the beginner missions we can complete day one finally so day one's finished day two i just have to complete chapter 17 and challenge which i'm going to do today day five i need to pull on the friendship market five times and then here day seven we are going to claim everything that we can and look look what lit up we got a sun badge Awesome. So another thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to use the sun badges today to get a really nice s rank mech. Of course, I'm not going to use it on the a rank challenge, but for anyone using this account after I'm done with the a rank challenge, I will have that s rank available. I also want to show you guys uh, who it's best to get from the sun badge. So we're going to get this. That might have finished off another copy of the Sukage, or not Sukage, <laughs> Sukikage. Okay, we did that oh my gosh look at this look at this look at all this stuff wow so much stuff over and over and over that was awesome oh my goodness okay so I have to recruit 30 pilots uh, all this stuff look at all these missions to do guys look at all this free stuff you get this game is very friendly uh, free to play friendly for new players. They give you a lot of stuff um, You should have no problems as a free to play player making progress in the game It's very generous. Okay, so we get another Suki Kaje shard or uh, fully finished mech from shards Okay, let's open some items guys Let's Open our goodies. Oops. I meant to do all of them That's just uh... Okay, so look at this combat simulation tokens I have 1,000 combat simulation tokens that's almost enough to get a free SSS rank mech so if I was trying to save up for another King Long and then do a fully maxed King Long then I can totally do that uh, stuff like that oh man that's awesome okay so I'm gonna go ahead and use five of these in the friendship market and finish that quest nice we have enough keys I did buy my keys today from the core that I'm in, as well as uh, from the arena. Okay, so we have diamonds. All right, that's a lot of stuff. We have plenty of diamonds. Uh, I'm going to be using this super voucher on the Dankuga. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually going to be doing something that you guys don't normally see me do. I'm going to be doing some pulls today. We're going to see if I get any decent mechs, okay? So, specifically, I'm going to finish off this Dankuga banner using some of my diamonds. Uh, because this banner ends in two days, right? I've already got one copy of a Dankuga, and I could make a second copy from the event with research. So that's two copies of the Dankuga. I would only need to pull three copies in order to fully max the Dankuga. So I want to finish this off before the banner ends, because that is an excellent s rank mech to have. Um... I just want to capitalize on what's available right now. Also, I want to get my Super Alloy Z up to 50 so I can get another Sun Badge. I'll do that all in this video. Okay. I gotta do this six times. 
So that was one, two. I'm not expecting to get... Oh, wow, look at that. That's an excellent, excellent mech. This, uh, that was the only mech I would consider as a free-to-play starting player uh, to replace the Dutong. All right, so we're at 50. Right, we're going to finish off this banner. Okay. S rank mech guaranteed this time. What are we going to get, guys? We did not get it. In fact, we got a really, really terrible S rank mech. So, man, my luck has been terrible pulling on banners on this account. It really enjoys me doing the... Look at this. I've already got two copies, and that's without doing research. So I got lucky and pulled a Dan Kuga. Did I do that on video? This might have been from a single pull. I might have done a single pull with the super vouchers uh, without spending diamonds and gotten a Dan Kuga. So that means once I do the research for the event, which is going to end in two days, actually it might be longer than that, it might be four days, um, so that's enough time to get the research done at least, then I would have three copies. That's enough to get a seven star Dan Kuga, which would be extremely strong. It's one of the better ranged mechs for a free to play player. So really, really good. This, uh, I'm going to keep, I'm not hurting for resources at all. I've got plenty of resources. Let me show you. 16,000, okay? So not like I really need to, in fact, let's just go ahead and do this. Not really seeing anything I like. Again, not really seeing anything I like. Ooh, Brunhild. Very good. Okay, again, nothing I like. Nothing very good. Susanu, yes. Okay, nothing. And we're almost done here. Man, not very much luck on that. And then nothing there. Okay. So let's go back to the mecha. Um, I'm got, I'll keep these for now. But when I'm running low on resources, I will disassemble these UK guys. Because I don't like them. And I also don't like the mech that you can use them to research into. Or for development. I mean, as a recipe for development. So not really worth keeping these UK guys. I'll disassemble them when I need the resources. There is another copy of the King Long. And as you guys can see, I have four King Longs. I did already disassemble the other four copies of the Suki Kaje that I had. Because I hate that mech. It's not worth using. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And in fact, you know, while I'm thinking about it, I'll just go ahead and get rid of this UK, guys. Why not? They're taking them to hangar space. What's the point? Okay, let's disassemble those as well. Anything else? Yep. There's all the other stuff that we pulled. Okay. And that's it. We got 10,000 just now. So we have two copies. I'm going to make a third with research. There's the A rank team, and I've got all these fully maxed A rank max already. Uh, we pulled a by who at some point. Can't remember when. It was on a single pull. Um, been using all my diamonds on pilots, actually. Anytime I see a good pilot in the cafe, I feed them diamonds so that I can get a good pilots faster. That's mainly what I've been using my diamonds for. But been, uh, I guess, kind of lucky with random pulls here or there, but nothing really good. I'd rather have another Dan Kuga than a Baihu or a King Long. But one King Long away from getting a fully maxed King Long. You only need five copies. And you can get that from the CS token shop, from the combat simulation coins. And I've got a thousand of these right now. I only need 2,000 more and I can get this King Long and have a fully maxed King Long. So that's pretty exciting. This account has uh, struggled a little bit with progression compared to an S rank team. Uh, if I'd been using S rank mix, I might have had a slightly easier time. But, you know, using all the tricks that I've used to boost the pilots as well as, you know, choose the right builds and mix up the mix it up with the builds for the teams, making sure I have a melee mech to take aggro away from the ranged, you know, just really trying to meta game the crap out of this and then I have you know as you can see finished chapter 20 today so that's the end of the original game every chapter after this is additional chapters for you know events that they've released um, patches they've added to the game new content they've added so all the chapters after this is extra and another reason you know that's the case is because of the missions right here day one main story the main story 
for the newbie beginner missions only goes up to stage 20-6, which we did today. So that's the end, guys. We did it. A-Rank Mechs completely beat the original story of the original release of this game and all the newbie beginner missions, and we got lots of free stuff and free S-Rank Mechs completely done with A-Rank Mechs. So it is possible, guys. A-Rank Mechs can get the job done. Um, I hope this series has proved to you guys that this game is free-to-play friendly and that A-Rank Mechs can do the job. Uh, and it's all about the pilots and the builds and the items and the gear. And you can, as a free-to-play player, absolutely fully build nice S-Rank Mechs. Um, and so you can start out your game using A-Ranks, right? And just save up your S-Ranks until you have enough copies to actually use them. Now I can make a 7-star Daojin guy, right? Now I can make a 6-star Galahad with Knight System, right? So I have more S-Rank options now than I did um, when I started the game. And A-Rank Mechs did the job just fine. So they can for you guys too. If you have bad luck like I do pulling on the banners, you don't get the mechs that you want, then... Uh, you can still play this game and have a lot of fun and do everything you want. So uh, it is free to play friendly. So to end off this episode, I want to do some really fun, challenging stuff just to see how good the A-Rank mechs are at clearing some of the harder content. Because the story mode has some challenges, but it's not the most difficult content. These are where people will struggle. Um, this content is usually a lot more tough. So I'm going to use my best pilot and my highest damage mech, and we're going to see if I can complete these very difficult challenges this is where the game gets challenging so we're doing okay in that let's go ahead and just pop that right away so that was the last i'm going to pick these up free health yes thank you we're going to do full invasion it's not the boss so i probably should have saved it but okay let's go over here oh no that was it we did it all right so beckus uh, with, you know, free affection, guys. By the way, I did not feed him any rare candies. So you can absolutely get a six-star Beckus just like me by this point in the game easily using just the affection items that you get from side stories and events or whatever else. So, yeah. Very easy to get a six-star Beckus by this point in the game. All right, so that's the Laz pet. We're going to do this to slow everything down because he's have a hard time hitting stuff. It's not going to last long enough to do much. I'm going to pop Arashi's clones here in a second. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'll save these last two skills for the boss. Because I have a feeling there's still a boss coming. Nice. There we go. I will pop that. Try to save from getting damaged too much. And then, you know, why not? Look at that. Look at that, guys. Sasaki's ultimate is so good. Come on, don't miss. Land those hits, Beckus. Like, this mech is actually so good because of the flame damage from the missiles. Like, it just it lands a flame debuff that continues damaging the enemy even after they get hit. It, it honestly ends up doing so much damage. Wow, but this thing's very evasive. But yeah. Landing that flame debuff is pretty strong. Got it. So yeah, Beckus in an A rank mech having no problem clearing these challenges. Um, yeah, so you can even copy this build if you're having a hard time. I'm going to start the music up again. Because otherwise it's kind of quiet. Alright, so we might actually have a hard time here. This King Long might wreck our day. Okay, so we're going to use this. Slow it down. It'll do less damage for a little bit. See, it lands paralysis damage. And then it's a highly aggressive melee mech. Alright, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Good timing on that. Oh, yes! Barely. I would say we barely won that. But hey. Wow, we did it. Nice. We even got a purple part. Alright, here we go. Chapter 20. Let's see how hard this is. Are we going against Zwan Wu? Yes, we are. This is a tough mech to beat. Yeah, this thing is a beast. Alright, so we're going to do Fire Will immediately. And then we're going to do this immediately as well. 
And we did serious damage to it. But it is hitting us right back. Alright, so I need this. Stay away from me. Stay away. Oh, that was close. We did it, guys. That was hard. Not gonna lie. We almost died. But I would call that a success. 100%. And that's it because 20, chapter 20 is all we've done in the story. So, we did that. I want to show you guys this really quick. Uh, I'm going to be farming these for the burst amplifier. The burst amplifier is an excellent item to get for any mechs with burst attack, which the Yaksha modified uh, has burst attack. So we can increase the magazine using this and burst attack reloads faster as well as having increased attack modifier. This is an excellent, excellent item that will make my Yaksha modified do even more damage. So definitely getting this as fast as I possibly can. So now that I've fully caught up to all the challenges, uh, my goal is to farm the challenge levels that I know are going to get me the most benefit. And right now, that's going to be trying to boost the damage of my main damage mech. So. Alright, let's go ahead and pop this really quick. And we're too close. We're going to get hit really hard here in a second. I'll pop the multiple, multiple replication. Nice. We did it. Uh, one more. We got a nice blue part there. So the auction modified is making short work of these guys, doing a lot of damage. But the French Knight Mark III is also a good mech to take into these challenges. With the paralysis damage and the 15% chance to frontal block, you can make it very tanky and give it a very high block chance from the front. If you put all your best items onto it, you know, make Beckus the pilot, it would absolutely wreck. So, that's another mech that you can try and use, is the French Knight Mark III. It's a really good mech. Um, okay, so let's pick up our rewards from here. We have completed every single day. There are no rewards left to get out of the entire beginner missions. You gotta squeeze these things for all they're worth, guys. Get all the benefits out of them you possibly can. It's worth every single piece of effort that you put into it. And as a free-to-play player, then you know you need all the help you can get. So, what do you know? What do you know? I don't even have to buy the King Long. Don't even have to buy it, guys, because they gave me enough as a free-to-play player that I can now fully max it full nine star king long as a free to play player that's insane that is absolutely insane okay so let me show you another reason it's insane if we go over here to retrofit okay go to retrofit king long you can turn it into the king long guy which requires a transmission core shard not even a full part guys all you need is a shard and that's easy to get Okay, all you need is a shard. These are not full parts. You can see the little shard icon at the top left. Okay, so that's very easy to get. I have all the materials I need. I could fully max and retrofit the King Long by tomorrow if I tried really hard to get these parts. Okay, so if you go to test, it tells you what's different about it, right? So look at this mix action cooldown speed and applies armor penetration for a while. And then it also gains probably a different weapon, a new weapon, along with an additional ability. So let's see what the first retrofit looks like. It's probably really good. Okay, so I'm watching down here to see what's been used. There's Phantom Thunder. That was the ultimate ability. That's really strong looking. Very cool. So it does over 1300 damage, guys. Over 1300 damage with no pilot and with no items. That's really good. That's a strong retrofit. Okay, let's take a look at the next retrofit. The King Long suit. Look at this thing. It looks way different. I don't know if you can see. It looks crazy different. Uh, for this, we need an EM shell. That's easy to get. We also need this, which unfortunately... Okay, so you can get this from a side quest. They're all unavailable. So evidently, we need to wait for the event to come up. This is a, an event limited mech. 
So when the event comes around, then you'll be able to get this and actually do the retrofit for this. So it actually doesn't require much, actually. These parts are easy to get, not too hard. And they probably you probably get them in the event as well. So when the King Long event comes around, maybe during the summer, maybe next fall, not sure when it comes out, but they redo these events every year so to give everyone a chance to build these retrofits. And sometimes they even combine them, multiple retrofits in the same event. So everyone gets a chance to build retrofit mechs, especially from ones that they give free to play players for free. This might even show up twice a year. So new players can definitely you know, hang around, hang on to this mech, and then eventually get the ultimate retrofit version. Let's see what this one does better. It looks so cool. Um, movement cooldown, minus 15%. It doesn't have the um, armor penetration. And it doesn't have the mech ability, minus 15%. It just has movement cooldown. Okay, so honestly, it seems like a bit of a downgrade, not an upgrade. But... And I'm also not seeing a new weapon. But Phantom Lightning Kick, that's new. Phantom Lightning Kick is new. Let's see in the reviews is if, if it's even worth it. Hmm. So it's increased animation speed. So while on paper it doesn't look that impressive, uh, based on some of the comments, it looks like uh, the main improvement here is the animations. So they gave it a new skin, they gave it new animations, it's, it, it ends up being much better, much faster because the animations are better. Let's take a look. Let's see for ourselves. Animation speed can make a big difference. Ooh, look at that. That's better movement. Ooh, this is faster, more crisp. Look at this. I can see a difference already. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's cool. No, I mean, that has the knockback effect that we know. If he does that, if he attacks the mech, that won't happen. That's awesome. That's new, too. Very cool. All right. I'm impressed. So... On paper, like I said, it doesn't seem that impressive, but I guarantee it would be worth it if you waited until the event and then did it because it looks like the uh, animations are better. So, yeah. So, right there, just like that, guys, I can get a retrofit King Long um, probably by tomorrow, and that's awesome. I already have a really, really awesome mech to help me progress even farther in the game. Let's do some arena. And we can see how our current team is holding up an arena. I did have some trouble uh, earlier, last night, actually yesterday, with arena. It was giving me some problems. My A rank team is actually having a hard time against the full S rank teams that I'm going against. So let's see. Watch the French Knight Mark III when it lands paralysis. There we go. See, so landed paralysis there. Took that thing out with the sniper cannon. There we go. Looks like we're going to win this match. Yeah, we did it. Sasaki and the Dao Tong doing lots of work. Let's see who did the most damage. Sasaki, of course. Actually, Sasaki did 50% of the damage for the entire team. So strong. If you can get Sasaki in either a Dao Zheng Gai, which has Undying, or a Dao Tong for the same reason, then, uh, yeah, you're golden. So, a rank team, guys. We have a full a rank team, and it just smashed an s rank team in PvP. This guy has an a rank team mixed with an s rank team. So, we'll see how we do against him. But it looks like we're going to do just fine. We are uh, leveling him, uh, out leveling him by five. But still, he can use s rank mechs, and we're not. So, it would seem like we're at a disadvantage. But as you guys can see, a rank mechs in the right situation can be very effective. This guy has a Dao Guy, which is strong. Suki Kaje, which is meh. They're going after Bekus, but Bekus is holding his own. The Dao Guy is doing good work. He's got the Bekus really low. 
We're not gonna have any problems that we got this. We may not even lose anybody. Boom, just like that, we did it. Didn't lose a single person. So, as you guys can see, A rank mechs. Man. This account, like, uh, I expected to struggle a lot more. Oh, here we go. This is a full A rank team. They got a Tian Shu. They got a Maz Mazinger Z. Uh, we're going to have trouble with this team, probably. If she gets off her ultimate, we might have a chance. But if they pop her before she uses her ultimate, then, yeah, she's about to die. Yep, there we go. She didn't use her ultimate, so that's probably going to be the game changer. If she had used her ultimate, we would have had a better chance. We got Beckus, all that's left, and they're about to take him out. They got down to two, though. If Sasuke had used her ultimate, we would have had a better chance. Let's take a look. Wow, a 9-star Armored Gold Zeno and 8-star Mazinger Z. That's who we were going against. We held our own. If things had gone slightly differently, we might have gotten really close to winning. Alright, so they got a Tsukikage, they got a Visago Sword, a Deerstalker. Ooh, nice. And they got this guy. Very nice limited um, event mech. This big, big boy up here. Very strong event mech. So we got our Yaksha Modifieds down here trying to do work. Hey, look at that, we won. He had some really, really nice mechs. He had a Deerstalker, five star, and he had a really nice event mech. Three seven star mechs, yeah, that was a strong team. We out, out leveled by five levels, but actually that's not as big a deal as you might think. A, because as you saw, I didn't have all my items upgraded to the most, you know, to the level I am now. They were all still le level 30, so that didn't really matter. We were at the same level uh, item-wise on our mechs, because I haven't enhanced them yet. Um, also, we have not gotten level 36. 36 is where the next upgrade happens for your pilots, where they get their next skills. So, roughly level equivalent, and we won by a lot. And he had some nice s rank mechs. So... I hope this series is proving to you guys that it's possible to uh, be successful in Iron Saga as a free-to-play player without having the best uh, s rank mechs. At least, you know, in the early to mid game. Once you get start, uh, once you start approaching the ultimate high level in PvP, then you need meta s rank mechs. But that's kind of expected, right? You can definitely be successful and farm and get everything you want in this game for the most part if you have enough patience. Um, so anyways, I, I made this series to prove to everybody that the game is free to play friendly, right? And you can succeed with a rank max. That's mainly why I made this series. And I hope at the least I've proven that. All right. So we're having some serious problems. We're going to die here before we have a chance. Yeah, but we got close. That was really close. They popped my, um... Sasaki before she used her ultimate. Again, it comes down to if she uses her ultimate on time or not. So she has trouble catching the enemy sometimes. They knock her away. Like this Zulong is an extremely, extremely good limited mech. Or it's not really limited. Uh, I don't think it's an event mech, but very strong mech. So she actually used her ultimate there. Made a huge difference. We easily won that because she used her ultimate. Makes a big difference. All right, we got five left. We got a Mephisto we're going against. That's a very strong mech. We got a Visago. Uh, he's got a Kamui and a Grace. Wow, been a while since I've seen a Grace. The Grace is an extremely, extremely good mech. On my main account that uh, I haven't played in a, a long time because I restarted, um, I had uh, a maxed grace the strongest mech I had it is extremely good but yeah we got demolished by this guy look at that all those are drones it's yeah ridiculously strong so we're doing, we're going to get up against some uh, players who have been in the game for a long time because the grace event happened a while ago so the, this person's been around a long time some of these players haven't logged in for a very long time at some point, I mean, if, you know, 
we get either lucky or unlucky, we might even go against my old team. My account's still active as far as I know. It's still in there. Probably has an arena team defending, even though I haven't logged into the account for a long time. Yeah, we're getting demolished now. We're getting to the higher levels of PvP. Those are some nice mechs we're going against. That's a Gawain, a Kamui, uh, whatever that is, Tawi. Don't recognize it. Looks really strong though. And then uh, Suki Kaje. Yeah, we're gonna have a hard time against this team. Come on, use your ultimate, Sasuke. Come on, use your ultimate. Nope. I think Rattle. Oh yes, yes. Oh my goodness, we we might win just because of that. Good job, Sasuke. Oh, no, 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 Beckus, Beckus, survive, survive. <laughs> That's funny. Smack down. <laughs> Good job, Beckus. So it, it's kind of interesting. An A-ranked team is uh, beating some teams you would not expect. So I, that is uh, partly why I'm showing all these PvP matches, is because I love that. I love that a smartly built A-ranked team can actually do this. It's so cool. Like... The game is well balanced. Um, I hesitate to say well balanced because there are some mechs that are so much stronger than others that it's kind of ridiculous. But the fact that at the early and mid game, before you start getting to where the whales exist, um, this stuff is possible. Like this game is really fun. Um, ooh, is it going to be a draw? Who, who died first? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a draw. It was a draw. So when it comes to a draw, you don't gain rank, I don't think, and you also don't lose rank. It's kind of like it never happened, but you still get credit for the completion. I think you get uh, arena points um, and weekly completion like you saw, but uh, it doesn't impact you negatively and you also don't uh, gain any rank. Come on. Aw, oh, man. Bekas went first. Should have been Sasuke. Yeah, we're, if Sasaki had used her ult, we would have won. Yep, and look at that. Oh, that was close, though. Very close. All right, guys. I think that's it. We did it. As you can see, a ranked team is living, living the dream. We're doing a good job. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, series. I might do more later. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing some tutorials. I'm going to be showing you guys in some videos and some guides on uh, retrofit quests, uh, how what's good to do, what's good to not do, what you know stuff that the game doesn't tell you uh, for doing the retrofit quests effectively, um, and then the retrofits, some of the better retrofits to aim for in the game for a free-to-play early game player um, and stuff like that. And then uh, also, I think I wanted to show you something else. So at least two guides coming. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the, the A-Rank Challenge series as a whole. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.